restore curse from taking us back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3 and 17, where he said, cursed. He cursed Adam, he cursed man, he cursed all of mankind for the sin that was committed. He said, because you listened to your wife and you did not obey me, and that you went ahead and you ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I curse everything because of you. Mm. So, now we come to Revelation 22 and 3, and he said, And no longer shall there be a cur any curse, and the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Hallelujah. So Father redeems us from the curse he, that he placed on man. And now we go forth in the gifts of healing. Last week we talked about the gifts of healing and that the leaves on the tree, that we are the fruit of we are the branches, we're the fruit, we're the leaves. We have there are many gifts that is given to the body of Messiah, and all of those gifts are for the edifying of that body. Hallelujah. Amen? All right. And y'all know I like for y'all to talk back to me. Okay. Hallelujah. We're going to go on. We start in Revelation 22 and 4. And it reads, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be upon their foreheads. Hallelujah. Numbers. Somebody read for me Numbers 6 and 27. Now, Father is, is showing us in Revelation here in the 22nd chapter, there's going to be a, a couple of different themes here. But the themes all tie in, there's a couple of different topics or characteristics, I want to say, of the word. Um, but the, the theme is all one. The theme is to be set apart. And what are we set apart by? We're set apart his name, by his name because as he told Aaron back in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, you will place, Aaron and his sons will place my name on them and I will bless them. Who has number 6 and 27? If you have it, will you please go ahead and read. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Israel and myself shall bless them. Hallelujah. So he said, the children of Israel shall stand. Now let's go back and recap. Rabbi 2 explained to us over again what the house of Israel, what the word Israel means. The word Israel stands for, it, it, it is a, it, it's a, a conjunction. Or, um, am I saying that right, Rabbi? Compound word. Compound word. There you go. It's a compound word. You have Isra and El. Ephraim wants to help you out. Ephraim is going to help me out. I'm kidding. The word Israel. It's split here. The word El is God or Elohim. Okay? So it relates back Elohim. He being plural, meaning not of many gods, but as of greatness. Okay? That's why you have to, when you study in the, in the Hebrew language, it's totally different from the Greek mindset. That's why the word says that, the, that uh, Yahweh, that the sons of the Hebrews, the sons of Israel, were going to war against the sons of the Greek. That's what we're doing right now. We have to war constantly against the, the Greek mindset that has been placed within us. And so as we look at this, people will say, oh, see, that means Trinity. No, it does not. Elohim is still one. Why? Because he calls himself that. One at God. I am one. I am Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad. 
I am one. So this plural ending could not mean more than one. But it means a talk speaks of the greatness. Gadol is the Hebrew word. The greatness. He is the Kohen Gadol. He is the high priest. The great high priest. So that's why that word Elohim is used even in the beginning. In the beginning, Elohim. There are sheep, Elohim. God, Yahweh, created the heavens and the earth. So that word El, that word right there, on the end is El. But this word right here, in Hebrew, the root word is always right, it's, I call it the guts of the word, right in the body of the word. Unlike with English, most times the root of the word is right at the beginning. But the root of Hebrew words is always right in the middle. And this is the word for Sarah. Now you wonder why the seed of Elohim had to come from Sarah. Could not come from Hagar. Because her name means to conquer. To conquer. To reign. And to rule. So her name actually means Conquering, reigning, ruling princess. She is, was, that's what her name meant. So, Israel being a compound word means to conquer, rule, and reign with El. With Elohim. With God. With Yahweh. Okay? Oh, all right. Let's move on. So, his name was going to be put on the children of Israel, those who were conquering, reigning, and ruling with him. His name was going to be put on them, and the children, the sons of Aaron, were going to do that. So, now that we know his name being Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh, El, Yahweh El Shaddai, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Yira, these people pronounce it Jira, but there's no J sound in the Hebrew language, so it would be a Y sound. Yira, which means all my provision and my provider. So we see the name of Yahweh being put on the foreheads. But let's deal with that word, forehead, today. Right here, the word forehead is Hebrews, Brown Drivers Briggs, 4696, and that word is Masak. Everybody say Masak. Masak. And that means brow or forehead. And it's from an unroot, unused root, meaning to be clear or concise, conspicuous. So something's on your forehead, it's right there. Somebody walks up to you, you got a big zit on your forehead, they see, they go, their eyes go right to that big zit right on the forehead. Because it's right there, it's conspicuous. It's right in the front, it's clear as day. You can see it, clear as day. So as we see that, Father Yahweh is saying to us that he's going to put his name clear, conspicuous, and concisely, right on front of our foreheads for all to see. Then Revelation 14 and 1, it says, And I looked and I saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Conspicuous. Out front right there in front. Then we go to Revelation 22 and 5. And the night shall be no more, and they shall have not, no need of a lamp, or the light of the sun, because Yahweh Elohim shall give them light, and they shall reign forever. So this is still talking about who? Who is it still talking about? Israel. Because they're reigning, right? It says, and he and they shall reign with him forever 
and ever. So someone get, I, I need uh, four people to get scriptures. Matthew 5 and 14 is the first one. John 8 and 12. John 9 and 5. And John 11 and 9. And we're going to see who the light is, who's the lamp. You know, David said in, in the Proverbs, he said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. But that word that was actually used there was Torah. Your Torah, your Devarim, your Torah is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. Because the Torah is his teachings and instructions. It instructs us and teaches us us how to walk. They're clearly and completely instructions. Who has Matthew 5 and 14? Matthew 5, 14. The next one was John 8 and 12. The next one was John 9 and 5. And the last one, John 11 and 9. Who has Matthew 5, 14? Okay, Lisa, who has John 8 and 12? Okay, Carolyn, who has John 9 and 5? Okay, Priscilla, and who has John 11 and 9? John 11 and 9, okay, Kenny. So let's read in that order, Lisa. You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain. Amen. Who has John, who has the next one? I do. John 8 and 12. Therefore Yahweh spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possess the light of life. Okay, and that was actually Yeshua is um, quoted there. Therefore Yeshua spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. But those, he says, but those who walk in darkness, what happens to them? They possess what? Light. But they have, uh, he says, but no, by no means walk in darkness. You are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness. Okay, so those who walk in darkness are who? Not follow. There you go. Those who do not follow him, they do not have a light because they are not following him. Okay, who has John 9 and 5? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. John 11 and 9. Be sure to answer, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. Hallelujah. So who is the light of the world? Yeshua. Come on, say it nice and loud. Yeshua. Yeshua is the light of the world. But in Matthew 5 and 4, who's the light of the world? Matthew 5 and 4, 14. I'm sorry. Israel. Except for you are the light. Yes. Israel. You are the light of the world. So he says... You are the light of the world in Matthew 5 and 14. And then he goes down and he said, I am the light of the world. So who is the light of the world? Who's the light of the world? We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Okay, remember last week. Y'all remember last week when we were talking. And I was teaching last week. And we were discussing the seed. Remember? Remember the fruit? The fruit and the seed. Everybody remember that? Okay? So, remember we were talking about the trees. The trees that were on either side of the crystal lake. Well, the crystal river. Remember? Okay. Great. I'm glad that you all remember that. Now, we've got the tree. And we've got the branches. And on the branches we have fruit. He's the scripture said in um, the first part of uh, uh, Revelation 22, he says that we are the fruit, that there are 12 fruit on, this, on these trees. And so we already decided that Yeshua is the tree. Amen? 
Hallelujah. But what, who do we say was the fruit? We are. We're the fruit. We are. Israel is the fruit. Okay? Because the tree, Yeshua, is the, he's living. We found out that he was the living water, so we know that he's living. So he gives life to the fruit. And then the fruit, what happens to the fruit? The fruit then falls to the ground right. and makes what? Another tree. So, if Yeshua is the tree and he's also the light, then what does that make us? Little lights. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine that men will see your good works and they will do what? They will glorify Father Yahweh who is in heaven. So as we see Yeshua being the light of the world, he also calls us in Matthew, he says, you are the light of the world. And this is quoted from Yeshua himself. He says that you are the light of the world. Why? Because I'm putting my light in you. Therefore, you are going to shine and you are going to be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in its season. Your leaves will not wither and everything you touch will prosper. Because we are little lights. We are to be, we are to mimic and to be. They're not dependent on Yeshua. Why are the reasons people stumble? Because there's not enough light. Because there's not enough light? Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes we can be a little more darkness than we can be light to people. Uh, but let's look at someone get Ephesians 2 and 20. Then someone else get 1 Peter 2, 4, and 5. And then also 8. So whoever gets 1 Peter 2, get 1 Peter 2, 4, 5, and 8. And the first person, Ephesians 2 and 20, we're going to find out why people stumble. Because clearly, clearly, would say, people, some people would say, now an atheist person would say, see, that's contradicting. That's why I don't read the Bible and I don't live by it. Because it's contradicting. He says first, you are the light of the world. Then he says he is the light of the world. Which one is it? Okay, we found out that a tree, and when a tree is known by what? The fruit it that it bears. Mm -hmm. And it gives more fruit and brings forth seed as itself. When Father Yahweh first created everything in Genesis, what did he say? To all the seed, he gave them a command. He said, and you shall bear fruit after your own kind. Right. So as we go forth in the world, we are supposed to be bearing fruit after our own kind, which is the tree, which is Yeshua. Exactly. We are not supposed to be bearing fruit of the seed of the enemy, but we are supposed to bear fruit after the tree, Hallelujah. which is Yeshua. Hallelujah. Okay, who has Ephesians 2 and 20? Please go ahead and read. Having been built upon the foundation of the emissions, emissaries, emissaries. emissaries and prophets, Yeshua Messiah himself, being chief cornerstone, being chief cornerstone, I have to go into 21. Mm -mm, just stay right there. Okay. That's good right there. Chief cornerstone. So that set the presidents for First Peter 2, 4, 5, and 2, 4, uh, First Peter 2, 4, 5, and 8. Who has that? Reading. First Peter 2, 4, 5, and 8. Go ahead. Drawing near to him, a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by Elohim and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a set-apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughter offerings acceptable to Elohim through Yeshua Messiah, and a stone of stumbling and a rock that makes for falling 
who stumble because they are disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. So, now we have Yeshua being a stone. And these are little stone jars. Yeshua is the stone. And then, so what are those other stones on the other side? Those are us. Doesn't it say here in 2 1 Peter 2 and 5, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a set apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughtering, uh, slaughter offerings acceptable to Yah to through to Yahweh to Elohim through Yeshua Messiah. So we have Yeshua being the tree, us being a tree, being the tree, Yeshua being the light, us being the light, Yeshua being the stone of stumbling. And us being the stone, living stone, but being a, as people stumble over him, because it says in the scripture that, that he became, he was a stone of stumbling. Why? People stumble over this whole concept because they don't understand. When you make statements like, I can't be righteous like no one righteous but the Father, and you use it just so you can justify you walking in an arid life, that's right. then that's wrong. Because he said himself, set yourself apart. He said, let your light shine. He said, you be holy yes. as I am holy. He didn't say, oh, that's okay, baby. You can't, you, you can't possibly do what I did. So you just go on and do whatever you're big enough to do, and my blood will cover you, and you'll go on to heaven anyhow. That is a fallacy. That is deceit. And anytime I hear preachers preach that we cannot be holy, that we cannot be perfect, they need to sit down and they need to give up their little Bible and they need to go on and do whatever they're big enough to do. Because most times when people preach that, they have their own idiosyncrasies they're dealing with. They have their own fallacies that they're dealing with and they don't want to deal with it. So they tell you, sister, you can't be perfect, so don't worry about it. Nobody's perfect. Mama, don't even worry about it. Father, be perfect. That's right. He is perfect. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Be ye set apart as I am set apart. Why? Because I'm the tree. And guess what? You get to be a tree too. Yes. I'm the stone of stumbling. People are supposed to stumble over you. People are supposed to not get to you out. Oh yeah, that's just another Christian. What is Christianity? What is Christianity? All of the doctrines and all of the beliefs, some can wear your hair perm, some can wear your hair natural, some say you have jet bell, you can wear red nail polish, some say you can't wear pants, some say you can't do this, some say you can't wear jewelry, some say you can't wear earrings, some say you can't do Notice that all the rules are set against women because of the fall in the garden. Man is constantly trying to get at them. Get, it's like they're trying to take them for Adam. And they're trying to get Eve back the best way they can. So I'm going to put all the rules against women. Because you all are the ones that caused us to fall. So, all of these rules, all of these sets of laws are man's laws that govern, try to govern people. But Father Yahweh said clearly, I'm the tree, Yeshua said, I'm the tree, I'm the light, I'm the light of the world, I'm the stone of stumbling. So just as he is, the stone of stumbling, people are supposed to stumble over our understanding. They're not supposed to understand. And they're supposed to wonder. And they're supposed to come to you and say, Sister, you seem a little different. Uh, what is your belief again? I get that all the time. What is your belief? 
I don't, I don't understand what do, what do you believe? What your denomination is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. I don't have a denomination. Right. Yeshua didn't have a denomination. The disciples didn't have a denomination. That's all man's laws and man's guidelines. So as we see the stone of stumbling, the rock that makes for falling, who stumble because of their disobedience. So why do people stumble? Because of their disobedience. Disobedience to what? Thank you. To Father Yahweh's laws. That's really a stone of stumbling. Father Yahweh's laws. Because somebody told somebody, we are no longer under the law. So we stumble and we try to figure out how do I live a holy life? Well, the laws is what tells you how to live a holy life. But if you throw out your measuring tool, then you have no way to figure how to live a holy life. Deception. The greatest deception was when the enemy, when Hasatan, made people believe that he did not exist. Uh -huh. That was the greatest deception. Big liable. He doesn't exist. And I can go on to heaven anyway. And I can do whatever I want to do. I can walk contrary to, contrary to Father Yahweh's laws. And it's okay. Because you know what? Jesus got me. His blood got me. So when I was sleeping with somebody else's wife the other night. So when I was sleeping with my girlfriend over here. That's my boo. I'm okay. Because Jesus got me. Like I said the other week, Jesus will love you. Yeshua will love you all the way to the lake of fire. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you. But he will love you all the way to the lake of fire. Because it's your choice. We have the choice of how we want to live. And either we're his, Israel, or we're not. There's only two kind of people in the world. What's his and what's not. There's no, see, what man has done is man has tried to insert something. It's just like with, with to modern day um, psychology. And it's very interesting. That's a very interesting subject. Um, that they took the stages of life. And in Hebrew, you go from being a child to a man or a child to a woman. There's no in between. You know, either you're a child. That's why David said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, he didn't say, when I went through adolescence, that I did something a little funky. And then, <laughs> I became a man. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. <laughs> but what the world has done is they've taken this stage, they plopped the stage right in the middle of being from a boy to a man, or from a, a girl to being a woman nothing in between that. Either you're a child or you're an adult. And this whole plot of this adolescent thing is what society has done that it has caused people to go into a state of like hibernation. And, and, it's, and we wonder why men have a hard time uh, trans transitioning from being a child to being a man. In Hebrew, understanding when a, when a young man becomes age 12, boom, he gets a bar mitzvah. You are now a, 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 a mitzvot. Ben mitzvot. You are now the son of the Torah, son of the commandments. You are now a man. And you are governed by the laws of God. Walk right. Period. What do we say? We give them that place in there. We let them do little silly things and act crazy. And then by the time they're 18, we let them do that all the way up till they're 17. And by the time they're 18, then we say, I put my foot down. You be a man. How? <laughs> How should I be a man? If you start at the time when you're supposed to start when they're 12, they'll be ready by the time they're 18. They've had six years, look at that, number six of man. Man's time to prepare to leave out the home, get a wife, and to go on and start his life.
So we don't want to be governed by the laws of this world because they will make up all kinds of stuff. Hypothesis? Oh, give me that break that thing. They change every day. It's an educated guess. Somebody decided they took an observation of something and they said, oh, I think my hypothesis is is that man doesn't become a man right after right after being a child, but he becomes a man after adolescence. That's the word we'll use. And then they take it, they go to these scientific conferences, and then they make it real for everybody else in the world, and then what do people do? They go back and they say, this is how it is. And then the whole world accepts this from all these little scientific minds coming together, making a decision without the knowledge of Elohim. No knowledge of scripture, no knowledge of, of Yahweh, and they make these decisions. And then we accept them completely. And we say, okay, oh, that we would accept Yahweh's word like that that we would accept his word, him saying something, him saying that you are the tree, that you are the light of the world, that you are a stone of stumbling, that you are living stones. Oh, that we would accept his word. Then in Revelation 22 and 6, he says, and he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true, and Yahweh Elohim of the set-apart prophets has sent his messenger to show his servants what has to take place, what has to take place with speed. He said, and I come speedily. I come quickly. Blessed is he who guards the words of the prophecy of this book. And Yochanan saw and heard these matters. And when he heard, he saw. He said, and I fell down to worship before the feet of the messenger who showed me these matters. John fell down to worship Yahweh. Not the messenger. But he fell down to worship the messenger. But what does the messenger say? In 22 and 9, he says, see, do not do it. Don't do it. So he went to worship, not the messenger. He fell down to worship Yahweh. But let's look at something. He still wasn't right to do that. So I want to ask you all a question today. So is it right to fall down at the foot of the cross? Be set apart, for I am set apart. There you go. Again, 
It has been written. Now, where was it written? Where was it written, y'all? Thank you. Exodus, Leviticus 11, 44, 45. Twice he said it. And then Exodus 19 and 6, he said you're a set apart nation. So that's why Peter was saying, listen guys, because it has been written, be set apart. I am set apart. For I am set apart. Who is the I? Thank you. Now who is the other one? Be set apart. You. That's right. Thank you. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. Someone repeat that. Go ahead. And the Elohim of peace himself set you completely apart yep. in your entire spirit mm. and being and body. Be preserved, blameless at the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah. This does, does this sound like this gives us an excuse to commit sin? No. Where did we get I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I just, I just have to sin. I just, I don't have a choice. Cause I'm a sinner saved by grace. We know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory and the esteem of Yahweh. But that's not what he meant. And because that's that Greek mind, Hebrew mind warring against the Greek mind. Because the Greek mind says, see, see, see. He says, we're all, up, we're all sin, falling short. We see, see, we, we can't help but to sin. So, I, you, you preaching, lady, that I, I have to be perfect and set apart. That, that, that's not possible. It's not possible for us to be that way. But that's not what he says here. He said the Elohim of peace himself has set you completely. Now he says, come apart and your entire spirit being that's what we recite in the Via Hafta that we will love Yahweh with all our heart with all our soul with all our being with all our might with all our generations we will love him that will pass down that word to our children to our babies and that they'll love him because we passed it down. Because we love him with all our being. But he doesn't give us an excuse to live in sin. And then he says in Revelation 22 and 12 and 13, he says, and I'm, come, I'm coming speedily and my reward is in my hand. Guess what? His reward is in his hand for you. Let me say that again. His reward is in his hand for you. Regardless of how you're living. Guess what? He's going to reward you. You will be rewarded for all of your deeds. You'll be rewarded. So if your deeds are filthy, dirty, and you are in full in the category above where we were saying and let the... Let me go back there. And let the wrong continue to do wrong. Let the filthy continue to be even more filthy. Why? Because his reward is in his hand. His reward is there for you. And then he goes and he says, I am the Aleph, the Alpha in Greek, and the Tav, the Omega in Greek. The Alpha, Aleph, and the Tav. I am the Aleph and the Tav. I am the beginning and the end. I am everything in between. Everything in between. Everything. I am all. Everything. Somebody read Revelation 1 and 8. Revelation 21 and 6. And then Revelation 22, we already did 22 and 13. But those are two more witnesses. Revelation 1 and 8, I'll read them, both of those. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the Alpha and the Omega in the King James Version. Beginning and the end, says Yahweh, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Hallelujah. I am Yahweh, the Almighty. I'm the beginning. in 21 and 6 and he said to me it is done 
Now, does that sound familiar? Where else has Yeshua said it's done? He's on the cross. Thank you. When he was on that wood, he said it's done. I am the Aleph and the Tav. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. To the one who first I shall give the fountain of water of life without pain. We talked about that fountain. We talked about that living water last week. That Yeshua is the living water. So, make no mistake about it. Yahweh says, I am the Aleph and the Tab. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am all, everything encompassing. All of it. And then Yeshua says, I am the Aleph and the Tab. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. He says, I am one. Messiah Yeshua said constantly, me and the Father are one. I am one. I'm the manifestation of the Father in the earth. The, the Hebrew word is, would be the, his, his essence, his memoirs, his essence in the earth. And that's what we are supposed to be as being Israel. And then he says, blessed are those who do it. His commands. Come on, y'all. Blessed are those doing his commands so that the authority shall be theirs in, unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. So, we see the authority. Now, there's a, there's a whole teaching that I want to do on the laws of Agudah and the laws of binding and loosening. And when he said, I give you the authority, was the same thing that Messiah said to Peter. He said, I give you the authority. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. It was a Hebrew idiom. For I give you authority, Peter. Kepha, I give you authority. So, we have the authority in the earth. And he says, as he goes on, he says, to enter into, and theirs will be the tree of life. You sure? The tree of life. And if they enter into the gates of the city, let's make no mistake about it. Whoever enters into the gates of the city is going to be doing what? What does it say at the beginning? Blessed are those who do what? Hmm? Blessed are those who are doing what? His commandments. Blessed is he. Blessed are those who are doing his commands. Those are the ones who's gonna get receive the authority, have the authority, and have the tree of life. Unto the tree of there shall be there's a tree of life. And then it says, and they are the ones that enter into the gates of the city, the New Jerusalem. There will be no thieves and robbers. There will be no one, as the scripture goes on and says in Revelation 22 and 15, but outside of dogs and those who enchant with drugs, we see those every day, standing on a corner. And those who whore and mur murderers and idolaters and all who love to do falsehood. Okay, tell me what is the difference of false? Truth. Opposite. False. Truth. True, false, right, wrong. wrong. Yeah. What's in between? Adolescence? <laughs> There's nothing in between. It's either right or wrong. Either we're his or we're not. There's two people in the earth, like I said earlier. Those who belong to the Most High and those who don't. And that's why he said, let those who's, who's doing filthy, let them continue to do filthy. You be set apart. Right. He didn't say that you had to go and beat somebody over the head with your Bible every day. Mm. He didn't say go to work and sit down and have a Bible study at your desk with all your co-workers when y'all supposed to be working. <laughs> he didn't say that. Because see, that would be W-R-O-N-G. Wrong. Because you were paid 
to go there and do your job. Now, if a conversation comes up, that's a different story. If it's on your lunch break or time off in the per that's a different story. So we have to understand that he says, be a light. Because guess what? If light, if you turned out all the lights in this place and it was no windows, it was pitch black, and you lit one match, what would happen? Huh. Light always takes dominance over dark. So if you are light and you walk into a room, guess what? You just lit up the room. You just lit up the room. And sometimes people will be offended that you lit up the room. Why? Because what do bugs do when you walk into a dark room and you turn on the light? They don't like that you turn that light on. Why? Because you expose them. So we are supposed to be a stone of stumbling, y'all, to expose darkness. We are supposed, when people walk up to us, I always tell the congregation, we are supposed to be like a mirror. When people walk up to them, you, they see themselves. And they don't like it. And that's why they get mad at you. And they said, you you bring condemnation on me every time you walk in. Get what? Stop the evil doing. I mean, I didn't say nothing to you. All I did was walk into the room. But that's what happens. Because light will always take dominance over darkness. So then he says, outside of these gates mm, are dogs, those who enchant with drugs. That's the pharmaceuticals. Because I'm telling you, they're just big drug dealers. They might as well be standing on the corner. It's talking about these little boys standing on the corner. They might as well be. Anytime you give a little baby drugs to make them act like, you know, they're children. Anytime you make them, want to make them act like an adult, give me a break. Oh, they have ADHD. No, that's a child. They're three years old, they're supposed to be rambunctious. They're supposed to be running around all over the place. And you have to say, stop running, please. You have to just stop, pad your walls down and everything else, because you know they're going to run. They're children. They're supposed to. But we want to do what? Pump them full of pills. So those are enchanters or drugs. I believe that. And then it says in 16, I, Yeshua, have sent my messenger to witness to you these matters in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. And then he says, come, the bride, the bride who? The bride, the spirit, and the bride, the witnesses, the two witnesses to him being Yeshua, to him being our Elohim, to him being our Messiah, to him being the Aleph and the Tau, He, to him being all of that says, come. And he who hears, he who shma, who doesn't just hear, I hear you, I hear you talking, mm -hmm. but who hears it, intellectually deciphers, and then walks it out. Let him say, come. And he who thirsts, come. And he who desires to take of the water of life without payment. Hallelujah. And then, at the end, and I want you all to read this with me. 22 and 20. I want everybody to read nice and loud. I know the Bibles are a little different. But just go ahead and read it as it says it in your scripture. Revelation 22 and 20. When everybody's got it, tell me so we can all read nice and loud together. Got it. Y'all have it over there? Okay, let's read all together. He that bears witness of these matters says, Yes, I am coming speedily. Amen. Yes, come, Master Yeshua. Come. That's what we're supposed to be saying. Come. Come redeem us. Redeem us from this curse. Redeem us from this sin. Take us into the gates of the city. Because there will be no unclean thing in there. But we see there's going to be unclean ones. They're not going to be in the city. 
because those gates of Israel will be closed off to all of those who are dogs, those who are not a witness of Messiah, those who are not his, all of those who claim, you know, there's a whole lot of folks who claim to be his that are not his. But what do we know? If they are his, what will they be? Fruit. And they'll be light. And there'll be a stone of stumbling. That's what it says. So if you are of Messiah Yeshua, you will have those three attributes. You'll be light. You'll be fruit. Bear fruit. And you'll be a stone, a living stone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together.